Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Chris Gaysford and we're going to be going back into Vim. And I know you guys haven't really enjoyed my Vim videos. I know a few people have watched them, but they definitely haven't been the top performer of my channel. But I really do want to really just get people using Vim. So in this video, I'm just going to skip a few steps. So the number one question I've been receiving on my Vim videos is why would you use Vim over some of these other text-based editors out there like VS Code, Atom, um, or anything like that's super easy to use, has a bunch of add-ins and modules and just stuff like that. And well, I don't use Vim right out of the box. Obviously, I have plugins installed on top of it. I use themes. There's a whole lot more to Vim than what just initially like meets the eye. So in this video, since I am setting up a brand new Mac, I figured I would just take you guys into the behind the scenes of how I typically set up my Vim editor for my go-to computers and kind of hopefully push past that old day DOS looking editor and give you something that's actually usable and cool looking. So let's hop over to the computer and we're just gonna jump right into it. So here we are, we are just currently running Z Shell, um, nothing fancy, just Z Shell and oh my Z Shell out of the box. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, if we go ahead and just launch Vim, you can see there's been no modifications. Um, it's just Vim right out of the box. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Um, and the problem with customizing Vim for me in the past was there's just a lot of different ways to do it and it's really complicated and you have to like manage some sort of plugin infrastructure for Vim. Um, about a year ago, I actually stumbled across a GitHub page um, and it was this Amex slash Vim RC. And honestly, I use it on every computer I use. So um, this project is called the Ultimate Vim RC. So this guy has been using it for over 10 years and has finally got it to a point where he wanted to share it. And it's super easy to install. Um, there's an awesome version and a basic version. Um, I always go straight for the awesome version personally, but um, you could kind of read through here and decide what you want to do if this is how you decide to do it. But this is going to give you a very high quality Vim configuration right out of the box and something that's easy to add on to. So we're going to go ahead and get this installed. Then once we have that done, I'll show you how to add a theme and how to install um, an Ansible Vim module or plugin to make it super easy for you guys to actually get up and running using um, this ultimate Vim RC. Vimrick, I think is actually what it's called. But um, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna copy these commands here. And then we're gonna hop back over to our terminal and we're just gonna go ahead and paste them. And we can see it's cloning. Um, and then, look, yep, it looks like it did install because it does say install the ultimate Vim configuration right there. So now inside of our home directory, if we just do it ls-a, you should be able to see we have a Vim, a Vimric, as well as a Vim runtime. There we go. A Vim runtime. And so this is where the magic is really going to happen inside of this plugin. And so if we just go into that... Vim runtime and take a look around. Um, we can see the installation scripts. We can see some for sources, forked and non forked, um, and a readme and stuff like that. Um, and then your actual Vim configuration files, they're going to be all under this Vimrix folder here. So if we just go ahead and ls Vimrix, you can see we have a basic, extended, and a few other ones. Um, the one that's important to us is this extended Vim because we didn't install the basic version of it. But if you did install the basic version of it, this basic.vim is going to be the one for you. And then just right out of the box, if we go ahead and launch Vim, let's see how it looks. Um, it's looking a little bit different. You can see it's a little bit padded. Um, the, down in the bottom here, we actually have some color highlighting, whether we're in normal mode, insert mode or even when we go into visual mode. And it just makes it a lot easier to know what you're doing as you're trying to navigate around. Um, some other things we get is some visual mode highlighting that's very handy. Um, so if we just add a few lines here and then hop into visual mode, we can see actually what we've highlighted. Um, even if we're doing a search, so let's go ahead and say Linux users. And if we come up here and we start doing a search, we can see what it's actually finding. And if we actually have 
this line in here multiple times and do a search, you can actually see it finds them all. And super, so just out of the box, you could actually see that this Vim seems a whole lot more usable than what I was showing you guys in the last Vim video. But we're not just gonna stop there. So let's go ahead and quit out of this file and let's go ahead and add a theme to our Vim. Um, and so if you head over to um, this Vim Colors website, it's over at vimcolors.com, you could start searching and finding a theme you like. Um, typically my go-to theme is this Forest Night theme here. Um, so if we go ahead and view it in GitHub, it's gonna just take us to this page here. Um, there's some different modes, different versions of it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to code and then just copy this clone URL here. Um, if you're not big with GitHub, um, the cloning basically just means you wanna copy that code base somewhere. And inside of our main Vim runtime folder, we're just gonna go ahead and find a sources and because we didn't fork it which means it is in our version of the code we're just going to drop it into this sources non forked folder here and if you take a look there's already a bunch of things in here according to linters and a few different themes but we're just going to go ahead and say git clone and we're going to paste that url there and if you take a look we should now have a ever forest folder here and it looks like it's right there. So if we just go into this ever forest um, and then into colors and we should find a uh, everforest.vim. And so inside of this colors, we have this everforest.vim name here. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that. And we actually didn't need the dot vim part, but that's all right. And then let's go ahead and navigate up a few directories back into that main Vim runtime and let's go ahead and modify our Vimrix and our extended Vim. And then if we just kind of move down here, it's towards the top of the file, um, it's this color scheme. So you can see they set the background to dark and then they set this color scheme to this peak C. And the Pixie's not bad. Um, I mean, it's currently what you're looking at as far as syntax highlighting this blue and green, stuff like that. It's not too far off from what I'm actually gonna be using, but it's just not my favorite one. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. And we're gonna go ahead and paste in that Ever Forest. And like I said, we don't need that .vim. So we'll just say color scheme Ever Forest. And then we're gonna go ahead and just write that configuration file. And then if we just go ahead and relaunch this you can actually see it does look a little bit different you can see our comment blocks are uh, have a gray background and um, instead of this blue green we have a red green set option here um, i think it looks a little bit nicer like i said this is my go-to theme for using vim um, so it's kind of all preference as far as what you like but we're going to go ahead and just save this again oh, i didn't make any changes that time but now we have a vim that's fully set up with a theme and it's super easy to install plugins um we just need to find the plugin we're looking for and I, again i use ansible and i'm a linux administrator so this ansible.vim is a must have for me when i'm working inside of a ansible project so we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing we're just going to clone this guy and inside of our Vim runtime, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to hop into that sources non forked folder and do the git clone and paste the URL there. And that's actually all we have to do for this guy. So when Vim starts, it's actually going to detect um, plugins that are inside this directory and automatically apply them. Um, so if we relaunch Vim, now we actually have those Ansible plugin installed in the background um, this isn't an ansible folder but just to give you that idea um, and some of the things that this advanced vim gives you right out of the box is it's going to give you like the nerd tree plugin so if you just type in nerd tree you can see now we have a way to actually browse files inside of vim are we going to go up a dir and since this is a clean computer i don't actually have like a code base to go look at 
All right, so what I went ahead and did real quick is I ran over to GitHub and I found this Ansible starter pack. Um, the reason I grabbed this one specifically is just so I could go ahead and show you that that Ansible module or plugin is working. Um, if we just go ahead and do an LS there, you can see we have the Ansible starter folder. And if we just go ahead and launch Vim, um, we're just in a blank Vim window. But like I said, we can actually launch that nerd tree. And this does have some intelligence find. So if we type a capital N and tab, you can actually see all the options we have. So we have nerd tree and that's actually the one we are looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up, find that Ansible starter, and you could actually see all of our folders in here. And if we go ahead and just launch our host, just by pressing enter, you can see we're now in this file. And so we can go ahead and make some modifications. Um, let's go ahead and say chrisgaysford.com um, and then go ahead and we can go ahead and right quit and save this. And now we're actually back into our file explorer to go ahead and open up any other file. And so as you can see, nerd tree out of the box is awesome. Um, but hopefully you're starting to see what you could start doing with Vim once you start adding plugins to it. And I think that's where I'm going to go ahead and lead this video. It's already been about 10 minutes long. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys that um, while Atom and VS Code, the reason a lot of people flock to them is because of the use of modules and plugins that really extend the functionality of them. Um, Vim has the same type of features. So if that's your main reason for not looking at Vim, then um, you might want to go ahead and reconsider it. And if you don't want to learn Vim, that is completely fine with me. Um, it's just something that I personally like to use and I use quite a bit of as I'm um, SSHing around into different servers and stuff like that. So um, hopefully you guys learned something cool in this video. Um, if you definitely liked this video, go ahead and hit like. And if you like more Vim content or even home automation stuff, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Um, I do think I'm going to go ahead and start branching out away from home automation. Um, I, I'm definitely not leaving home automation, so don't panic if that's why you're subscribed to the channel. Home automation videos are still on the way. Um, I just think I want to do some other things. Um, and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy that content. But I will also be doing more Vim stuff. So if you want to learn how to do tabs, splits, uh, maybe some different modules and plugins to actually extend the functionality of Vim a bit more, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. I really do appreciate you guys sticking around this far in the video if you're still here. Um, thanks so much for being a part of this channel. I, the last time I checked, I had over 600 subscribers and that just completely blows my mind as somebody that just does this on the side and um, just enjoys making videos. So thanks so much for being part of the channel and I will see you guys in the next video.